Squarespace hosts my personal website, so that's kind of cool. Um, so thanks everybody for coming. There's some seats in the front, so if you want to move <laughs> in, that'd be great. Um, so this is just a little bit about me. Obviously kind of crazy. Uh, so I love running. That's me at the Twin Cities Marathon last October. And right before the finish, I totally knew um, our board chairman for NPC Kids, Tom Ryder, said, I'll be right at the top of the hill, like with my camera, ready to take your photo. I'm like, oh. So the whole time I'm like, all right, here we go. Got to smile for Tom and make it look like this isn't the worst thing I've ever done. Um, so that's why apparently I look so excited to be running a marathon. Um, <laughs> the finish line photo was not as great as that. Um, so, and then obviously a little crazy, that was actually taken the right photo at my birthday party this last year where we had donuts and went bowling. So, um, I love donuts, love ice cream. So that's a little bit about me too. Maybe that's the reason why I have to run so much. Um, and then the middle photo is uh, the Dorothy shoes from Wizard of Oz. Um, and when I started my business, I had taken a photo of red shoes that sort of, um, had this theme of like, there's no place like home. So my family, my home, and my friends are really important to me as well. Um, and then the middle is um, part of my branding, so. Um, and I kind of base my life about, around this theme of don't forget to be awesome. Um, I have this hanging in my apartment that I see every day. And it's just kind of a gentle reminder to um, be the best that I can be. So in whatever I'm, whatever I'm doing. Um, and then with this theme of childhood, so Carl approached me and he said, this is the theme, do you want to talk on it? And I was kind of like, childhood, so what do I do? Show awkward <laughs> photos of me growing up? That's weird. Why would anyone want to see that? And then he's like, no, no, with your work with the kids and photography. I'm like, oh, OK, good, because this is so awkward. Um, and it's funny because my parents designate like stages of my life based on what my glasses looked like. Um, my friend Christina can attest to that also. Um, so yeah, this was, this was being really weird. I don't know why. I just feel like, can you hear me if I just talk like this? Yeah, yeah I okay. We're not doing this. This is too high tech for me. Um, so yeah, this was like kindergarten. That was so cute. It's great at my boy haircut then. Uh, and that was like third grade when I decided to not smile at the teeth, apparently. I don't know. I never smile like that anymore, so I grew out of that. Uh, <laughs> um, and then all of you guys got these cool name tags that say, as a child, I learned mostly from and my parents. Um, this was taken a couple of years ago. And they are, so they were, um, Kind of a little bit of my childhood background is um, my parents were high school sweethearts so um, that got married when they were 19 and 20, had me at 24 and my brother at 28. So my parents are fairly young, um, which all of my friends are jealous of. So, um, and they just really like are my biggest supporters, my biggest cheerleaders, my biggest fans, and anything I've ever wanted to do, they're like, you're gonna do it anyway, so we're just gonna support you along the way. Um, so, and my mom actually grew up, her dad was the president of the Optimist Club in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So she <laughs> she grew up in this very like sunshine, glitter, unicorns, life was great, half class full. My dad is like the exact opposite of, of that, and so them molding together, and you get me, um, who is uh, growing up was kind of like, oh, what well, was me, whatever. And then my mom would come and be like, throw some glitter on it, and be like, like, don't worry, here's a glitter band-aid for your stubbed toe. Um, 
so they've just been really supportive. And when I decided um, to, a year and a half ago to take my business full time, um, my mom was the one that kind of pushed me to do that. Um, she kind of saw how unhappy I was in my full time insurance payment processing job <laughs> and was like, why are you doing this to yourself? Like you have a dream, you have a vision, you have a goal for your life. So go chase it and we'll be behind you supporting you 100% of the way. So um, that's a little bit about me. Um, and they are, they like to call themselves the founding members of Team Sid. <laughs> like, I don't know, president, co-president, I don't know what they are. Uh, and then these guys right here, Jack and Marilyn um, and Craig also uh, from MCTC really um, came along in my life when I needed them. Um, and I, like, like Carl was saying, I graduated from Concordia St. Paul with an English degree and was like, what do I do with this? I don't know. I like to read. I like to write. So someone hired me to do those things. Um, and my parents knew that I sort of had this photography passion behind me and were like, well, can you get a degree in that? I guess. So what did I Google? Photography schools in Minneapolis and MCTC came up. I was like, that sounds like a good option. Apply, got in, had never been to the school before, did not know anyone that went there, uh, stepped in the door, and Jeff was like, welcome. And I was like, okay, I think this is where you'll be. Um, and like from day one, just they're like behind all their students 100% of the way. And I just um, am really grateful for them and for the guidance that they've given me. Um, and allowed me to come back and talk to students, which was, that was the first talk I gave last February, and I was like, what do you want me to talk about? Mm -hmm. Talk about yourself. Okay, I can do that for two hours. <laughs> um, I guess. So it was great, and, um, and I'm just really blessed to be able to um, go back and, and kind of pay it forward uh, with what I've been given in that program. Um, and then that bubble right up there, I'm not really sure I've been there, but that was from our um, MPC Kids fundraiser this last October, and just right over there we have what you see in the back there, this big board with these pull-off tags of um, sponsor child for $200, sponsor transportation for $75, um, camera for $100, and we had this moment at our fundraiser where we just called out those different levels and people just raised hands and I was able to pull those off and pass them around to people that I knew that I didn't know, and it was just this really great moment of feeling so supported in our cause and in, um, in what I believe that this organiza organization can do. Um, so that's why we have there. And a little bit about the childhood theme too, is that I have been a nanny, was a nanny, sometimes still do on occasion, uh, for 10 years. <laughs> so a lot of that was seen like this kid, Thomas, who's now eight. I started nannying for him when he was like four weeks old. So I've been really um, blessed to be a part of his life and see him grow up. And these two guys, Beckett and Bowen too, um, Beckett decided that we should have this heart filter, apparently, <laughs> on our faces. And he thought it was so funny that there was two hearts in the corner of my eyes. He's like, okay, that's <laughs> um, But just throughout that, like, just, um, you know, when I was at the insurance job for a little while, I was like, why can't I just have a job where I just hang out with kids all day? Like, like trains, do color and stick figures. This is the best work of um, drawing art that I've ever done, so I felt like I should put that there too. Uh, because I'm a photographer, not a, not a drawer. So um, yeah, so I just, I just really felt grateful to have that be part of my background um, and just building relationships with those families um, and having them trust you so much to watch their children and to be a part of their lives and kind of be kind of a third, fourth party in like their upbringing and teaching them how to be good people and um, just all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then uh, the other part of my life is that I'm a photographer. Mm -hmm. um, photographing, because of this like huge background of working with kids, um, I found that every wedding I've shot, I gravitate towards the kids. And when it comes to like photographing the bridal party, I try to make the same jokes that I make with the kids, and sometimes that doesn't translate as well. They're like, that is an argument so weird. Um, but 
But I just found that I relate more to kids. And I don't know exactly what that says about me, but maybe I'm a child at heart or something. Um, but I just love the part of my life where I get to be invited into these families' homes and take their portraits. Um, this was a family out in California that I had never met before um, and was going out there for a trip and uh, said, you know, I'm coming out here, hire me to take your family photos if you want, if you trust me. Um, and this family contacted me right away and they said, we want you to come. I was like, okay. Um, and she said, we're very energetic. And as you can see here, uh, and we just really love being together as a family. And so I walked into their home and it was like glitter and rainbows and sunshine and it was just like so great. Um, and you just felt so embraced by them and that just really makes me feel more able to do my job. So um, this is Isla and Brighton. Uh, and then this is another family that I worked with this past summer. Um, they live in Minneapolis, and they're friends of um, another family friend of mine. Um, and they, I needed work for a show that I was putting up at Sebastian Joe's this last fall. And I kind of wanted to start promoting this idea of a photographer coming into your home and photographing you as you are. This very natural, like, I am not telling you what to do. Um, you do what you do, and I'll be here, and we'll see how it goes. And they were like, totally. We have five ideas of things we want to do while you're here. We want to read comics, because that's what we do on Sundays. Um, Freya likes to ride her bike in the alley, so she's going to do that. Um, the dad had just gotten this El Camino from his grandfather in California, shipped over, and he's like remastering whatever you do with cars, refinishing it. <laughs> not, a, not a mechanical person. <laughs> Um, I'm the person that still calls her dad and is like, Dad, listen to the sound. What do I do? He's like, I'm going to talk to this. Um, bring it to the camera. They'll take care of it. Um, so they just had all these great ideas, and they were like, well, tell us what you want us to do. I'm like, just do all these things. For them, the gallery, two weeks later, and they were just like, wow. We had no, like, you made us look so good. I was like, no, you actually look like, like No, I don't do any, like, this is not a fancy filter, Photoshop thing. I don't like select just like her shirt and make it orange and then black and white. Like that's not my style. It's very as it is. Um, and I just love it. Um, so this family has been super supportive of me and the things that I've done. They came to my opening and we all like ate ice cream together. It was amazing. Um, and they since have invited me back to photograph um, them with their grandparents and the dad's sister and her husband were here over the holidays so I photographed them again and it was just amazing. The dad has um, terminal cancer so they really just wanted to capture all of them being together. They baked cookies, they read stories, we played in the snow. Again, amazing. All of these things I love to do and if I have my camera then it's even better. So, um, bar bat mitzvahs. I sort of fell into this market. Um, and three, four years ago, and pretty much never looked back. Um, I personally am not Jewish, but I have a great respect for the fact that these 13-year-old kids can stand in front of a congregation of people and just say that they believe it's good, it's important to be a good person, and, and all of these like values that they have are the same values that I have, so I feel really connected to them. Um, and then after they're done doing that, we get to dance to call me maybe together and it's really awesome. <laughs> um, and they have things like glow sticks and like they just 13 year old kids don't know yet that like this is my better side or like this is how I like to smile because I feel awkward otherwise or like they don't have that recognition yet they're just who they are and I feel like that genuineness is really um, important and it's important to have that documented and I feel like if I was 13 and I had a photographer photographing me that was like, you're awesome, you look great, all these things, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm like the coolest person ever. Um, and so I feel like if I can give that to any of these kids, great. I just, I, they're so awesome. And they challenge, I mean, every, every one I photograph is completely different and totally challenging, and I just feel like that relationship that I'm able to establish with my clients is like the biggest blessing ever. And any 
business I get from this market is all word of mouth. I don't do any advertising. So if they speak volumes about you, like as a person, and you really care about them, that's going to come back to you. So um, that's a little about what that part of my life. And then here we are, MPC Kids, which formerly known as PATC Kids, um, Packed Kids, Patch Kids, uh, Photography at the Center. We've changed our name like three times in the last year, but this is final. So MPC Kids. Um, so a little bit about us. Um, this space is the Minneapolis Photo Center, obviously. Founded in 2010 um, by Orn Rutchick, who's a Minneapolis-based photographer and graphic designer, um, and his wife, Abby. And the M MPC is basically a membership-based co-op studio, which is what you see here. Classes, workshops happen here. Um, the galleries out in the hall. Um, behind this big door back there is our digital lab, which we just got all new iMac computers. Um, there's dark rooms, printers. Um, you can book out the space for shooting, for videos, um, for meetings over there. Um, we have another digital classroom and another lighting lab. I can open all of those spaces up, maybe Jonathan can, um, our facilities guy. After this, if you guys want to feel free to walk around. Um, and I will say now that the gallery is empty because next Friday is our opening of the Vivian Meyer Out of the Shadows show. I don't know if any of you are familiar with her work. Um, she was a nanny in the 50s and 60s-ish era um, in Chicago and New York. And no one knew she was a photographer until 2009 um, when the storage locker that contained her work was put on auction and opened up and everyone was like, wow. <laughs> this like amazing documentation of just life on the streets and um, as a nanny and just these amaz amazing, amazing, amazing images. Um, and we like to call her the first selfie photographer. The first, like, inst if Instagram was a thing in the 50s, like, Vivian was the number one. Because um, she was photographing with a square camera on, and then took these amazing self portraits of herself. Um, so that's next Friday, um, is a preview night, $25 admission, and the proceeds go to MPC Kids. For that, um, so you could be one of the first in the Midwest outside of Chicago to see that work. Um, for the first gallery outside of Chicago and outside of New York and LA to hold her work in the US. So it's pretty pretty amazing stuff. Um, and then the formal opening that's free to the public is the next week. Um, so all that information is on our website, and some of it should be around in the halls and things like that too. So um, so NPC Kids. So I was an intern at the Photo Center in 2010 when I graduated from MCTC um, and just really fell in love with this place. I think it's a great community of photographers, creative people, um, and we like to say we're the best kept secret in Minneapolis because people sometimes, I mean, still come here and they're like, what is this place? We never knew this place existed. Um, so with things like Vivian, we're really like hoping that that will kind of usher us into the broad spectrum of the creative community in Minneapolis. Um, we have classes and workshops and all that good stuff too. So, um, so I was an intern and then I left to kind of find my way um, and did that crappy insurance job for a long time. Uh, and then last, so the fall of 2012, Ori and Abby uh, called me up and they said, well, we just started this nonprofit and we kind of need somebody to take care of it. Do you want to do that? And I was like, what is it? And they're like, teaching kids photography, I was like, done, sign me up, where do I, where do I go? Um, so I started with them, and they had been incorporated since like 2010-ish, um, but hadn't done any sort of programming, they were just sort of getting their feet wet in the nonprofit sector. Um, so they said, well, we have these grants um, to do programs with the YMCA and the Minnesota Historical Society, so figure that out. What do you want to do? So we developed this program with the YMCA over in North Minneapolis, um, twice a week teaching kids photography uh, with these little Canon point shoot cameras. And um, it was probably the one of the most challenging programs we've ever had, just because I literally had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> um, my background is I'm very organized and I'm very like 
structured, but then when I work with kids, it's like, whatever, do whatever you want. But you can't do that when you like have these cameras and you're like, you know, supposed to be instructing and doing all these things. And so this was a great like get my feet wet kind of experience. Um, and the kids created these self portraits. So um, portrait that they took of themselves, and then a, a picture of something that they felt represented them, and then you um, mesh those together in Photoshop, and this is what we got. Um, and then at the end of our program, um, it culminates in a final exhibit. So this was the first exhibit that we had, um, and we we didn't know really how we were going to do it, but I was like, let's just print the photos, put them in some frames, bring the easels, and we'll just see what happens. Bring some bring, bring some treats. Kids love treats. We'll do that. Um, so we did that, and they it was just this amazing moment of each kid standing next to their work and all the other kids in the YMCA coming by and like asking questions and then like standing so proudly and like really nervous and then some of the kids feeling like it wasn't even a big deal. I'm like whatever, this is so big. But you're just trying to be cool, so. Um, so that was the group over on the right that we had and um, sometimes, I mean, and now this work stands and is on the walls at the YMCA. Um, and we're still getting calls about it, and the kids are still like, that's my picture, that's so cool. So I really feel like, I mean, that was probably one of my proudest moments. Like, okay, we did it. All right, like, we did that. And the kids just feeling so proud, and that you were sort of instrumental in that process for them. Um, because, I mean, I know as an eight-year-old, I didn't have a photo at my community center, and I didn't wasn't in anything like this, you know? So I always like try to remind them like of the importance of this experience, but also just like let them be kids and let them have fun and and just see where see where it lands sometimes. So um, then we also like so last uh, uh, this, so a year ago actually like right now we had a program at Moreland uh, Elementary School in West St. Paul and we partnered with them through um, MRAC was holding this speed dating event for nonprofits. So you had like literally two minutes to tell these people at a table like what you were, what you wanted to do, and, and if they could help. And Ori and I went and we were paired with these people from like the Gregorian Chant Society and like, <laughs> all of these things. And Ori's like trying to tell them what we do, and I'm like, this is not working. Like, we will never partner with you. Like, these are, we serve kids ages 10 to 18. Unless these kids are Gregorian enchanters at any time, like, I can't help you, I can't, we can't do this. So the event was coming to a close, and I'm looking through, like, really quickly at this list of people that are there, and I'm like, this woman, Teresa, works for a school, we have to go talk to her. And I literally, she's putting on her coat ready to go, I'm like, I need to talk to you. And she's like, who are you, and what are you doing? And I was like, we teach kids, kid, photography, cameras, community, and she's like, and her eyes got really big, and she's like, okay, we need to sit down. And she was so excited, and she is, was a facilitator um, at the Moreland End for this program. Um, we went to National Camera, and we were like, we need cameras, and they're like, here's 10 blue point and shoots. Um, and it's so funny because <laughs> Ori said, well, ask them for black. Like, black is classic. <laughs> and I was like, well, what other colors does it come in? Like, pink, purple, like green, blue? And, and uh, Julie from National Camera said, well, it comes in blue. I have 10 blue. I was like, okay, we'll take blue. And I was like, uh, and I was like, just trust me on this. And the kids, I still, like, when I see this photo, I have flashbacks to hearing their, oh, those cameras are from us, and they're blue. And I like, win for me. Uh, so I instantly texted Ori. I was like, blue is a hit. Black's boring. And he was like, okay, fine, fine. Like, I'll trust you. Um, so these kids documented the portrait project, and then um, this kid, Ben, who's, um, he was showing this photo of uh, his brother, and he's like, I just like it because he looks so crazy in this picture. <laughs> and like, that's so funny. <laughs> so it's just like, it's all of these programs that we do are just eye-opening to see like what kids now think is cool, and like how you sort of reinvent the wheel with them, because we all have, these 
that take photos. I'm guilty. Uh, these are all Instagram photos. <laughs> I don't use a real camera when we're out with the kids. Um, but trying to teach them, like, okay, this is, you know, these are elements of composition that you can use to your advantage. And, like, all of these sort of things that we're sort of trying to teach them will make their photos even better. And, like, the main thing that we try to teach is, like, slow down, touch your feet, like, this is how you're supposed to stand. And all these things, and then we're like, okay, go have fun, and they don't do any of these. Things. So you have to like constantly be reminding them, um, and that's the gallery. Moreland has this great gallery space in the front of their school, so we've done all of our exhibits there. Um, and again, like all the parents come, and we bring brownies and fruit snacks. It's great. Um, and then we also did this program with the Jerry Gamble Boys and Girls Club in North Minneapolis, and this program. These kids are like the best ever. I mean, I like little girls. Like, I'm gonna try not to cry when I show the photos of the kids. But um, it, we started out. We always want to have at least ten kids. So we started out the first day. We had ten, and then suddenly there was only five, and just five kept coming. And I was like, I don't care if we can change the lives of these five kids. Five is enough. I don't. Whatever. We can tell the grant people that they can have their money back. They really can't because they're expensive. <laughs> but five is, five is five. Five is great. Um, the kids were able to come here every Friday, which was a huge commitment because who wants to do something like after school on Friday, like when we have your friends? And so they came every Friday. We taught them photography. We like had snacks. We did um, uh, hands-on experiences at at the club, photographing with them like side by side. We each had a kid. Um, and when I say we, I'm talking about these, all these fabulous people. Um, Louise is here, and Judy is here, um, and we had uh, three other people come on to this program with us. This is Lester on the side. She's a retired um, high school art teacher. Um, and so the main thing is like when I I, I had this idea like let's pair working photographers with the kids in our programs and have this like mentoring experience. So all these like these people just sort of fell into our lap. Like Louise was the intern for our MPC. Judy was like, hey, I got some free time. Can you need any help? And I was like, yes, please help us. Um, and it was amazing. It was amazing to see the kids connect with the grown-ups and for the grown-ups to connect with the kids and um, the person at the Jerry Gamble Boys and Girls Club said, Laura West, she wrote this amazing statement that's downstairs on our gallery walls that says, like, that this program was able to cross over what these kids thought was community and, like, just totally blow up their minds and, like, hey, this person that, like, I wouldn't know from anything, like, really cares about me. And I think, like, that was the biggest thing for me in this program, like, realizing that we have the ability to change their life and like make them feel special and make them feel like they are worth whatever their idea is. And no idea is dumb. No photo is bad. Like, you can do it. Um, it was amazing. And then this is the work that they came up with. Eric really loves sleeping, so he was sleeping. <laughs> Atasia loves painting her fingernails and smiling. She has a really great smile. Uh, Diaga and her sister apparently really loves corn. <laughs> um, and Kalia really loves my books. So, um, yeah, the kids just, and that opening was amazing, and we got to meet, for the first time, their families. And that was amazing. Like, the families coming up to us and saying, like, are you Louise? Are you Sydney? Are you Judy? My kid loves you. And I'm like, they do? Like, <laughs> even now, I'm like, oh, really? Me? Um, it's great. And I think that that's, Adding these people, more people than just me in this program, is the best idea I've ever had, and the biggest reward. Um, yeah, I mean, because there was a guy, Wally, that was able to bring Eric out of his shell of wanting to sleep during class, uh, and he was just totally connected with him. And Eric was the guy that needed a male role model in his life so desperately. And he still, like, when we've gone back to the club, he's like, is Wally coming? Yeah, Wally, why don't you come to? Um, like Eric asked about you, and he's still just like, oh. yeah. So that's, I mean, as rewarding as it is for the kids, it's even more rewarding for us. So, um, and this was their exhibit. 
And all the club, like, all the kids were like, how old do you have to be to be in this program? <laughs> and I was like, 10. And they're like, oh, I'm six. And I was like, oh. I was like, all right, can you teach six year olds? He's like, <laughs> can you teach six year olds? I'm like, we'll see. So who knows? Maybe, I mean, we've had kids in our programs that have said they're 10, but they're really eight. Well, I don't know. I, these days I can't tell. I'm like, if you're 13, I think you're like 16. I don't know. Um, but yeah, just an amazing, amazing experience. Um, this was a program that I brought Judy on uh, to co-teach with me at Heritage, which is a middle school that the kids from Moreland end up at. Like they sort of transition from elementary. We only have five minutes? Sorry. <gasps> no, it's okay. Um, so this was really great. We taught like 43 kids in two weeks. Wow. Oh, a little intense. Um, this is some of their work. I faced my fear of lizards. Helping the kids photograph these things. So Judy can attest to I hated the snake. And the kids were like, Sydney, come see the snake. I'm like, mm -mm. okay. Um, this the show hung in their in their wall in their hallway for like a really, really long time. This kid Ben, his artist statement said, I photographed this because it's of nature and nature is wondrous. Amazing. Heart melt, like seriously. I and we uh, taught with the teacher, Emily. And ironically, like all the female teachers Judy and I taught with last year were pregnant when we taught with them. <laughs> What's in the water here? I don't know. Um, we had an amazing summer. We, fought, we did summer camps for like a week with all these kids. Um, this was in St. Paul. And then these girls from Roseville, we took them around all these sites in Minneapolis. Um, they're just totally loving life. When I turned my back and I heard all this water splashing in this photo, I was like, oh my god, the cameras. <laughs> Where are the cameras? And the um, staff person was sitting on the bench with all the cameras. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> like, I could have been better for them. But, um, yeah. So this is a quote that I found that just really demonstrates like what we do here. Like, you never know. And we might not know for like 15 years. And we could get a kid that comes back and is like, remember me from the Jerry Gamble Boys and Girls Club? And then I'll start crying again. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so just really quick, this was our second program with the Boys and Girls Club. We got t-shirts made. We thought we were like the bee's knees, except that they were like 14 sizes too large for us. <laughs> the sizing was messed up, but I still wear it. Um, we took the kids to Target Field. I don't know if any of you saw the news piece that we had on WCCL, it's on our website, so we can watch that. Um, the kids were interviewed, and Kendale, this guy said it was his best day ever of his whole life. Like, get really nice when you watch that, because I still, like, I pretty much watch it every day, and not because I'm interviewed in it. <laughs> it's just really awkward to watch yourself. But just to hear him say that, like, when I'm sitting there writing grants and writing grant evaluations and just feeling like, oh, this job is so boring, like, I just want to play with the kids and the cameras, and then I, like, watch this, I'm like, okay, renewed, here we go, this is why we're here. Um, just really great, and, yeah, and then just having these kids be a part of my life and being able to be a part of theirs is the best experience ever. And having them be so excited about taking pictures, I think that's the biggest thing. I can see a part of myself in all of the things that we teach. And like I said, if I had had a person in my life that was like, I was eight and they were like 28, and they were like, you're so cool. That's, that's so cool. I just think it's really great. An awkward group photo of the kids like hating life at the end of the baseball game because it was so hot. <laughs> but yeah, it was so cute. And again, at the opening. Again, being able to meet their families, like this girl, Jasmine, her parents were amazing. They were like, give us your card, like, we totally want to hang out with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I totally hang out with you guys. Um, again, at Moreland, Judy taught like eight, what was it, like 83 fourth graders or something ridiculous. Like, hats off to Judy, that was amazing. And then we taught 20 kids and did a newspaper with them. Um, brought in Gail Rosenblum, who Judy knows and has worked with from the Star Tribune, to talk to the kids. And instead of asking questions like, what's it like to be a reporter? They're like, what's your dog's name? 
<laughs> like, the other girls, like, where do you live? What's your house? <laughs> Guys, <laughs> focus. And then they make her these amazing thank you notes with gray balloon bracelets, and I'm like, hi, I've been teaching you for 12 weeks. Where's my bracelet? <laughs> I was about to just like rip it out of the cart and put it on. I was like, no, you gotta send it to Gail. Um, so we made a newspaper with these kids, and like, apparently, Perla, she was amazed. Um, but yeah, they're just so adorable and hardworking, and it's amazing to kind of see their personalities come out throughout the weeks that we're with them. Um, yeah, again, historical society, we did these cyanotypes, um, which if you come back next week, they'll be on display downstairs, so it's a little plug to come back and see those. Um, amazing experience with high schoolers from um, the American Indian community and seeing them connect their culture and their history with who they are today. Um, amazing. I was not able to attend a lot of these sessions, so I had like Luis and um, Lester from the past program be kind of my eyes, and every week I it was the best thing ever. It so sucks that I couldn't be there. But I was there this day that they made these, and I was like blown away. Just really amazing, amazing work. Um, kid president, I don't know. Show of hands, who knows what happened? <laughs> totally love that kid. Like, watch, watch those videos and our video. Like, back and forth. Um, Kip Stand Academy is, was our biggest grant, like $23,000. We got that email, like, had to take a seat. Because uh, it was amazing. And their school is all about just getting kids caught up and preparing them for college and, like, just pushing them to be 110%, like, 110% of the time. And these kids are so hardworking and just really great. And we're working with a group of eighth graders this year to do this program, to do a newspaper with them. And I'm just really, really happy every time we get to go there and teach them with Judy. Um, so, yeah. And then, this is a final thing. Um, I, when I was, I listened to TED Talks a lot, too, on um, education, because I've taken education classes and I thought one day I might be a teacher and voila, I kind of am, I guess. Um, so I always feel like gaining knowledge from what other people say and have learned and it's all this huge sharing and networking experience. Um, and I heard this talk by Rita Pearson and I just like blew my mind. So it's every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they become the best that they can possibly be. So. Read it. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. I've never met it. Um, but I just feel like, you know, and if, and if any of you are connected to whatever, anything that I've said today about helping out, um, we're always looking for volunteers and people that want to be a part of what we're doing here. Um, whether that's helping out in a class or mentoring, or if you want to hang out and just meet the kids or come to their exhibits or whatever, like us on Facebook. Um, that's all of our stuff is up there usually. Um, and yeah, just get in touch with me. My cards are on the table, both professional and business. So, um, yeah, so thanks so much. Sorry for a long bit of time. Thanks.